Hey there, comic book fans. It's Rusty again with Collector Auctions, and here I am sitting in the parking lot getting ready to go into Third Eye Comics in Annapolis, Maryland for another new comic book day. Now, I ended up missing last week. I was on the road, got to visit Hello Comics down in Charlottesville, Virginia. So when I'm going to Third Eye today, I'm actually going to look for a few things that I couldn't find down there, as well as all the new comic books for this week. Now, I don't have a big list for this week. But there are a few things, a few variant covers, but like all new comic book days that I go to, I'm looking for books that just were not on my radar two to three months ago when I was putting in that pre-order with mnmcomics.com, my subscription service. So we're going to go in, I'll take some footage like I normally do, and then we'll get back home, I'll bag and board everything, and then we'll sit down with the books and go through everything that I pick up. So stay tuned and I'll be right back. All right, everybody, I just finished up here at Third Eye Comics in Annapolis, Maryland. I didn't shoot as much footage as I like, but I hope you got a pretty good idea of the new comic books that came out this week. I picked up the books I was looking for. I'm going to go home now. I'm going to bag and board everything, and we'll sit down, and we'll do a little show and tell. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back once again. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, everybody, I made it back home, and I bagged and boarded all the new comics, so let's just get right into this. First book up here really should be the book of the year. It should be one of the most important books Marvel has put out this year. And there's something lacking in my opinion, and I don't know exactly what that is. I've seen some other channels talk about this, but when you put two of the top creative talents out there together on a book like this, it feels like the book should have more significance and a bigger impact. I was left a little bit kind of wondering what the heck's going on here because some of the characters don't even seem like they're in the right timeline. Maybe that will get explained, but when you put two of the top creative talents out there, you've got Jonathan Hickman and Greg Capullo on this new Wolverine Revenge issue right here. This new series, and I imagine it's a limited series, I'm not really sure, but I had heard some 
reviews of this and some questions about what the heck's going on. And when I read it myself, I'm kind of questioning it my, myself as well. Some of these characters don't seem like they're in the right timeline. So I don't know what's going on. But honestly, this book right here should be one of the most important books Marvel's put out this year. And you've got talent coming into Marvel, and you're doing this. Jonathan Hickman, of course, is already there. He's already overseen the Ultimate Universe, which I kind of question if there's anything decent outside of maybe the Ultimate Spider-Man that he's writing. I don't know about the direction of everything else at this point. But when you get Greg Capullo back after all this time to work on this book right here, it feels like a throwaway. It feels like he's going to go in and do a few issues and of this book right here and that's going to be about it and i don't like that i like to see top talent like that come back to marvel i did enjoy the art don't get me wrong i did enjoy the art but it feels like it's wasted on something on a story that doesn't seem to make sense yet hopefully they will jonathan hickman will bring us up to speed maybe that will get explained i don't know but Art-wise, it's been really fantastic. And I did pick up the Red Band issue as well. And I haven't opened this up yet to compare the differences. I think maybe we should do a video on that. Because honestly, I haven't seen a lot of people talk about and do a side-by-side -side comparison. Maybe I'll do that on one of these books. Or maybe I'll take out one of the Bloodline books. That storyline just finished up. And I did buy several of the Bloodline, excuse me, the Red Line books books on that so maybe we'll do that as a comparison but I picked those up even though I was rather disappointed but I was excited about it going in so we'll see where it goes at third eye I do continue to having spider-man in my pull box this is which issue 55 we are almost at the end of the Zeb Wells run and I looked at this book and I thumbed through it and I'm sitting there going I continue to question why I continue buying this book. It's been a constant disappointment. It felt a lot like partially sitting there reading that Ultimate Spider-Man from a few issues ago where it was nothing but the couples, Mary Jane and Peter, having dinner with Harry Osborn and, and Gwen Stacy. And it was nothing but just sitting here talking. Now, there's a little bit more to that than this, but... It felt a lot like that. You had multiple pages of Peter just having talking head conversations with a girl that, honestly, I maybe I'm not reading the book well enough. I don't even know who this girl is. I thought it was Mary Jane to begin with, but then I realized, no, that's not what she he called her in there. I don't know. Guys, when you stop caring about a book, maybe you do need to stop buying it. And I've got to take those lessons to heart myself. As a collector, it's hard for me to stop runs on books I have enjoyed over the years. But not enjoying this at all. I'll be glad when Zeb Wells is off the run and maybe we get somebody else that will bring some something new to Spider-Man. Not enjoying this book either. So we're not off to a great start here. But I did I am enjoying this. This is the Garth Ennis run on this new series and I'm sure it's limited as well, Get Fury. And this is kind of interesting because I'm enjoying this because it is it's kind of a non-superhero type of thing. Sure, we've got Frank Castle, the Punisher, in this, but it's set at a time before he was the Punisher. You don't have really those superheroes things. You actually just have a, have a story going on. Now, I don't enjoy the art quite as much, although I do really like this cover. But this has been interesting. It's a nice change of pace for Marvel to get away from just straight up superheroes and stupid stuff. I honestly, we all know science fiction in comics, that's the bread and butter. But when you ground stuff in realism and not just make fantasy things happen, much like what you've been seeing in Spider Man and his whole Zeb Wells run. I kind of I dig that. I dig getting back to what could be real. I mean, take that for what you want. But I actually enjoy not having superheroes in this book. And we're going back to the Nick Fury that I actually really like. So, continuing with that, I'm sure that's a limited series. I did pick up the latest issue of Red Coat. And this was, I had started to drop these titles from Jeff Johns and the Ghost Machine universe. Not because I didn't like them, it's just because I think that the talent 
over at Image with the Ghost Machine Universe. Brian Hitch on this title. You've got Jason Fabic and Gary Frank, for example. All these guys with Geiger and with Exodus. And I know there's a lot of people out there that think Rook Exodus is the book of the year. Honestly, I don't care about these characters. I care about the Marvel characters. I care about the DC characters. I'm just being quite honest. It doesn't mean I don't enjoy reading these, but it just feels like the talent's getting wasted on these kind of characters when you could bring it to something that's really established, an IP that's really big. I mean, we've done it before. Let's do it again. Pretty much is my attitude. Having said that, I still enjoy this. The Brian Hitch artwork is fantastic. And... As much as I said I was going to drop them, I didn't drop any of the Ghost Machine books. It's just I didn't pre-order this one, and I did pick that one up at Third Eye Comics. So let's set these down. And like most new comic book days, I go and I buy mostly on variant covers a lot of times. Not just the stuff that I missed, but books that have great variant covers, and I kind of question whether I want to add them to the PC. And I did add... Teen Titans number 14, or Titans 14, you've got this superpowers kind of homage back to the old superpowers toys of Donna Troy. Donna Troy, especially in the red outfit, was one of my favorite characters during that George Perez run. I think she's probably the unsung hero from that run, from those first 50 issues to the point where she got married. I love that character. It was She wasn't just a clone of... Wonder Woman. It was She was her own person. I always liked that. And I did pick up Nightwing number 17 because you've got the original Nightwing costume on this. And you've got these, of course, these superpowers, toys, homage type things. Pretty cool stuff right there. So those were completely cover buys. I couldn't care less about the stories on the interior. Of course, I may give them a read, but I doubt that I'm going to enjoy that. And then... Finally, we get down to the two books of the week, which, honestly, these are the best books of the week. This first one right here, to me, is the book of the year, or the run of the last year. It is from the Conan the Barbarian's run on Titan Comics by Jim Zub, and continues to be the one of the most outstanding comics of the year. The art changes a little bit. They've got a different artist on the inside, and you've got a beautiful J. Lee cover right there. But Jim Zub continues to get better at Conan. He, that was the early criticism I had on the run, starting with the... It was a free comic book day from a year ago, and then they started the run. I felt like the writing didn't feel quite like it was in place. It felt like it was a modern writer writing what they felt like. It, it sounded like it was coming from today, not what it would have sounded like back then. Not that they were speaking English, of course. But that was my one criticism with Jim Zub. But the storyline, the plot has been fantastic all along, and I think he's only getting better at this. What a great book. Highly recommended this right here. And that brings us to the last book of the week. It is one of my favorite books of over the last 20 to 25 years. Every month, I would get my new comics from my pre-order service with Eminem Comics. This is the first book that I read. I go through everything, but when I get to this book, this is the book that I actually read first before I even finish going through the rest of the books. It's one of my favorite characters of all time. It is... Asagio Jimbo, and this is issue number five of the latest miniseries called The Crow, and I will have one criticism. I can't imagine me actually having a criticism of Stan Sakai and Usagio Jimbo, but honestly, I read this, and it, as the story wrapped up at the end, I'm having deja vu. I feel like we've already had this storyline, or at least piece of this storyline. You've got the bounty hunter stray dog involved here and the ending to the story that involves him i've seen this before i've seen this play out exactly they've done this story before and elements of the story leading up to that very end with stray dog we've seen that as well we've seen elements to all of this and i honestly didn't it's my only criticism of this book 
it's been one of my first and maybe only criticisms of Stan Sakai in all of these years is I think he repeated and recycled story elements for this story right here. So that's a little disappointing, but it doesn't take away from my enthusiasm for this book. You know, I won't stop reading this. It's still my favorite book, like I said, of the last 20 to 25 years. But guys, that is it. That's everything I picked up on this particular new comic book day. Let me know what you think of the books I picked up and let me know what books you picked up for this new comic book day by leaving me a comment below. And if you enjoy this kind of content, definitely hit that like, slap the subscribe, and click on that notification bell so you guys don't miss out on any of the episodes I put out Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 3 p.m. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Have a great day. I'll see you for the next show. And remember, every comic has a story.